Please welcome Associate Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs of the University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine, Dr. Cherie Singer. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the class of 2025 White Coat Ceremony. It's wonderful to see all of your faces. Before we begin, I would like to thank the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, the initiators of the first white coat ceremony in 1993. They have provided humanism and medicine pins to each of our students today as a gift. I would also like to thank United States Senators Catherine Cortez Masto and Jackie Rosen for providing certificates marking this momentous occasion for the class of 2025. These certificates are on display as you exit the Pioneer Center for the Performing Arts for your viewing following the program. One of the ways we know this event is important is because of the distinguished guests who are now with us today, both in person and virtually. I would like to introduce them now. Representing the Nevada System of Higher Education Board of Regents, Chair Kathy McAdoo, Regent Joe Arascata and Regent Laura Perkins. The University of Nevada Reno President, Brian Sandoval. The University of Nevada Reno Executive Vice President and Provost, Dr. Jeff Thompson. Renowned Health President and Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Tony Slonim. Renowned Health Board Member, Jim DeVold. Renowned Health Chief of Staff, Cy Johnson. The University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine, Alumni Chapter President, Dr. Jonathan McCaleb, from the UNR Glass of 2007, Residency Class of 2011, and Fellowship Class of 2015. Also representing United States Senator Catherine Cortez Master, Akea Sanders, and representing United States Senator Jackie Rosen, Molly Rose Lewis. <laughs> Excitement for the matriculation of the class of 2025 is also demonstrated by the great turnout from our community. Renowned Health, the VA, Northern Nevada Medical Center, Reno Behavioral Health Hospital, 
St. Mary's Community Health, the Community Health Alliance, Washoe County Medical Society, and our community physicians. These partners are critical to the success of our learners. I would also like to welcome University of Nevada Reno leadership, including the vice presidents and deans, along with the UNR Med faculty and staff members that are here this evening. And finally, welcome to our families, spouses, and friends. You are the motivation that has led the students here to embark on this intense professional journey. So with that, I would like now to welcome Brian Sandoval, president of the University of Nevada Reno to the podium for a Wolfpack welcome. Students may be seated. Hello, you and our med class of 2025. Let's give them a big hand. And on behalf of the entire university, it's so great to see you and see your friends and family. And we're so excited that you've decided to pursue your education right here in Reno at the University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine. The white coat ceremony is a time to ponder a lot of things. The immense responsibility of becoming a medical practitioner. What the road ahead will look like for each and every one of you. What you are now as you commence this journey. And what you hope to be in four years as you finish this chapter of your next education and move on to the next. Each one of your journeys will be intensely personal. But, and I think this is true of all of you here today, you did not arrive here alone. Your families, friends, teachers, professors, staff members, coaches, mentors, and coworkers have all been there for you throughout this journey. Sometimes simply to applaud what you've been doing, and sometimes to provide that needed oh yes, you can, that, come, that can come at just the right moment in your lives. That's a gentle nudge, but it can be one of the most powerful nudges a person can ever receive. The power of someone believing in you. No matter how independent we are, I think at the end of the day, we all know we've all been on the receiving end of the kindness and generosity that has inspired us to do the same for others. I can tell you all right now, too, that you won't be alone during your time at our School of Medicine. For more than half a century, our School of Medicine has trained more than 3,900 students and fellows. This number has found great success due to the personal encouragement, the professional training, and the academic and research excellence that characterizes an education at our School of Medicine. Our graduates become people who know how to make a difference in their communities, in our state, and throughout the world. I like to call this the Wolf Pack Way, where on our campus, we know that everyone looks out for one another, where everyone listens and respects one another, where the sense of teamwork is strong, and where the investment that we make in all of you accompanies you that gentle nudge that believes in you throughout your time with us. The Wolfpack Way encourages us all to do what the best doctors always do, to reach out to the community, to help those in need, to give of ourselves so that others may have the same opportunities. The Wolfpack Way tells us we are all better when we build community, when we find common ground, when we allow ourselves the personal vulnerability to be real, to share a common vision that focuses on the grace and sees the goodness in all people. The Wolfpack Way is about planting seeds for the future and how we are helping our fellow human beings discover the possibilities of that future. As you wear your white coat, remember that it represents something far, far greater than yourself. We are at a time in our history where we need empathetic, driven, creative medical professionals like never before. This is the kind of example that Dean Schwenk has personified throughout his entire career during his decade as Dean of our School of Medicine. Tom has always been the 
best kind of doctor, the kind of doctor who listens and who cares about his patients. From Michigan all the way to Nevada, there are scores of family practitioners who will tell you they do the things the way Tom would have done. That is, with humanity, with hope, with care. Be like Tom. Be like the professors you will have during the, your time as students here. They exemplify our very best in medical professionals. As well, you're going to need to be advocates for your patients, for those clients who may not have a voice but need to be heard. You will need to be advocates for science. Be healthcare warriors in this regard, fierce in your practice of science and in your defense of it. Science is the foundation and underpinning of any and all research you may do and any and all medicine you may practice. It is imperative that we always hear your voice as advocates. I want to wish you the greatest successes on your journey. Welcome to the Wolf Pack. We look forward to you showing us the Wolf Pack way. We're so proud of you. We're so excited about what you're going to do in your lives and as your time as students at the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. With that, thank you very much for your time and attention and go pack. So now it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Thomas Schwenk, Dean of the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine to the stage. Dean Schwenk. Well, that was a bit overwhelming. Thank you, President Sandoval. <laughs> Uh, I add my welcome to all of you, to our distinguished guests uh, that Dr. Singer recognized. And I'm going to do something that I've never done in 10 years of these events, and that is to recognize and, and thank and send my love to my wife, Jane, who had to watch virtually, but thank you, dear. There are a few particularly... <laughs> That's why I don't normally do that. <laughs> there are a few particularly special events each year in the annual life cycle of UNR Med. This is one of those events. Welcome to the white coat ceremony for the class of 2025. There is tremendous energy and emotion in the room this afternoon for both the students and for your family members and friends and for good reason. This is the beginning of a lifetime of challenge, commitment and professional service. These students are entering what I consider to be the most engaging most demanding, exhausting, exhilarating, satisfying professional life imaginable. All of you in the audience should be extraordinarily proud. These are some of the most talented, bright, dedicated students you will ever see. We define the best academically, humanistically, and professionally, so the bar is even higher. Two years ago, which seems so much longer than that, we celebrated the distinguished 50-year history of the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. We are proud of that history and proud of our tradition of success. We are now entering what I believe will be an even more distinguished next phase of excellence and success with our partnership with Renown Health. This affiliation opens up enormous opportunities for these students for outstanding clinical practices, more diverse clinical teaching resources, expanded clinical research programs, and new residency and fellowship programs. Many of these new resources will contribute to the education of this class of 2025. As you know, I recently announced my intention to retire as dean later this month. I will not have the privilege of leading the school as you take this exciting journey over the next four years. It's been an extraordinary honor to be part of this profound educational process for the past 10 years. That process will continue for you with the exceptional leadership of Dr. Melissa Piasecki. These outstanding educators and leaders will provide the expertise and environment that will contribute to your transformation academically and professionally. You have an extraordinary medical education team and faculty members who will take care of you for the next four years and do extraordinarily well for you. 
And that brings us back to the white coat ceremony. Not all schools have this ceremony. Some schools believe that the ceremony has an inappropriately elitist tone. Many physicians do not wear white coats. Some patients are intimidated by white coats. And the symbol of the white coat does not fully account for all the many healthcare professionals who will make critical contributions to your professional growth and to your career. But the white coat does have significance. It represents the enormous responsibilities that all physicians bear, even if these students will live in scrub suits for the rest of their lives. Being a physician is not just a major, not just a job, not even a career. It is a calling, a covenant, a sacred obligation to care for patients with the highest level of professionalism and excellence. There's a fundamental relationship in society between physician and patient. The role of the physician is honored in all societies across time because of the physician's commitment, service, and altruism, which you will embody. Tremendous energy comes from a reciprocal relationship with patients that is enduring and powerful, a regenerative relationship in which both patient and physician receive more than they give. That is the point of this ceremony. Complex transition from patient to physician is subtle and it is gradual, but it is inexorable. This is the beginning of that process. You will be expected to have knowledge of a size and complexity unimaginable to you today, but we will prepare you for that. You will be expected to make decisions of enormous consequence, and we will prepare you for that. A success from here forward is ultimately not about how smart or talented you are. There are lots of smart people doing lots of important jobs and careers. Your success comes from other attributes. Your commitment to patients during good times and bad. How hard you work on behalf of your patients, even when it is inconvenient, fatiguing, and interferes with your personal life. Your willingness to grow and learn throughout your entire career to the very last day. Your ability to create powerful reciprocal relationships with patients that improve the quality of life for both of you. Your commitment to diversity, inclusivity, and equity for all patients, team members, colleagues, and all around you. How you model the highest level of ethical behavior and your ability to communicate with and recognize the importance of every member of your healthcare team. Your reward for meeting this high bar of professional behavior is the opportunity and privilege of doing amazing things. I've been a physician for 46 years. For all those years, it has been the highest privilege to care for patients to enter their lives and to share in their stories. All physicians have stories. Every physician in this audience has stories. You will have stories, stories that are amazing and meaningful and powerful. What I've learned from these stories and, and the dozens of stories that I have heard over the years is that we should always respect and stand in the power, uh, in the awe of the power to do good, even in the face of tragedy. We should always appreciate the opportunity that comes from that power to achieve things more intense, more rewarding than anything we could ever imagine. As physicians, we need to be always humble in the face of the trust and confidence patients place in us. Your stories will come from delivering babies, helping children grow and thrive, solving, solving perplexing medical mysteries, preventing disease, improving mental health, easing suffering, and giving support during the last days of a patient's life. Learning complex surgical procedures, developing and using technologies we cannot even imagine today, and discovering new knowledge that will save lives and alleviate suffering. Every one of those stories is important. In all of these stories, there lies a miracle. By becoming a physician, you have the opportunity to contribute to miracles. To prepare, to prepare for those miracles, you owe it to your future patients to be the best physician you can be. We will help you get there. I wish for you the excitement of doing amazing things and the satisfaction of making a difference in the lives of your future patients. Welcome to the University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Melissa Piasecki, and I am the Executive Associate Dean at University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine. I know some of you are just meeting Dr. Schwenk for the first time today, and I've had the privilege of working with him during the 10 years that he's been our Dean. We know that Dr. Schwenk is retiring at the end of this month. What the students should also know is that you are right now the star attendees of one of his very favorite events, the white coat ceremony. During his decade at UNR Med, Dr. Schwenk has never and would never miss a white coat ceremony, which is why I'm going to borrow just a few minutes of this evening's event to say a few more words about one of the most humble leaders I've ever worked with. Not all leaders are physicians, but all physicians are leaders. They lead in clinical practice, in research, in academia, in policy, and in public health. As we've heard from President Sandoval, all of you future physicians are future leaders. Some of you already aspire to lead, others you will be asked. From here on out, whether it's the classroom, the clinic or the community, you'll be presented with numerous opportunities to step in and step up. So you may be asking yourself, what kind of leader should you be? And where might you look for a role model? Tom Schwank is a service or, excuse me, service oriented leader who puts the needs of others first. He supports and celebrates the growth and success of his students. He isn't afraid to share knowledge and to share power. He talks more about the accomplishments of his medical students and residents and faculty than of his own. He puts people first and truly cares about them, as we see in his career as a primary care physician and as a researcher on student and physician well-being. UNR Med has educated physicians for 50 years, and Dr. Schwenk has served as our dean for 20% of that time. To say that he has left an indelible mark is an understatement. He's leaving as the School of Medicine is in a uniquely strong position, and we will continue to move forward with momentum thanks to the continuity of leadership that he's developed and empowered. Serving as Dean of our School of Medicine is the culmination of Dr. Schwenk's remarkable career of giving back. The School of Medicine is so much better for his leadership. With that, Dean Schwenk, could you please come up to the stage so we can give you a little something to express our thanks for the legacy and momentum that you have helped us build. President Sandoval, could you please join us? Thank you so much, Dean Schwenk. And now it is my pleasure to invite UNR Med's alumni chapter president, Dr. Jonathan McCaleb, to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Piasecki. And thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Hello, Dean Schwenk. University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine, faculty and staff, friends, family members, fellow alumni, and hello to you, class of 2025. Congratulations to each of you on what you have accomplished so far, and welcome to the next part of your journey. And what an exciting journey this will be. You will have opportunities that will challenge you make you stronger as a person, humble you, entertain you, 
and each day you will build memories and experiences which will last you a lifetime. I will never forget one of the first experiences I had early on in the first half of my third year of medical school. I was on wound care rounds as part of my general surgery rotation at the Reno VA. And the job of the third year medical student on these rounds is to carry the basket full of supplies, including sterile Q-tips, gauze, a variety of tapes, and saline for rinsing wounds. As an astute and always ready medical student, I had arrived early, having studied up on the various stages of tissue healing so that I could answer all my attendings and senior residents' series of questions during rounds. With my basket full of supplies and a head full of knowledge, I had been instructed to be in the nursing home by 9 a.m. And like every medical student, I bartered myself more than enough time to arrive in a location that I had never been to. <laughs> Arriving on the unit, I glanced up at the clock on the wall, 8.30 a.m. <laughs> what on earth was I going to do for the next 30 minutes in this strange and surprisingly busy part of the hospital? Wasn't this the nursing home? I had already rounded on all my inpatients for the day, and all of my post-op patients were found comfortable and sleeping in bed, little if anything new to report. However, down here, in what I later discovered was called the CLC, or Community Living Center part of the VA, things seemed as close to chaos as I could possibly fathom for a Friday morning between 8 and 9 a.m. Nurses were moving quickly from room to room to attend to people who were shouting from their beds. Bells and whistles and every sort of alarm was going off left and right. Some residents were wandering toward the door, which of course set off another alarm. It was at that moment, waiting to start these wound rounds, that I sat in the nursing home and consciously recall thinking, note to self, avoid nursing homes at absolutely all costs. <laughs> so now, fast forward to today. There is absolutely nothing that anyone could say or do to pull me away from my role as the medical director of the very same nursing home that I now work in daily. <laughs> As I proceeded through years three and four of medical school, I discovered that there was nothing I enjoyed like a real challenge. And as I found out, geriatric medicine would be the specialty that would put my skills to the ultimate test. Not only did I have to be medicine strong, but I also had to balance that with real world issues. Like, how does this treatment make sense for my elderly patient's quality of life? And when are too many pills actually doing someone harm? And finally, when does a chronic disease cross the line and become manifestation of end of life? Rather than recoiling from the environment I so dreaded as a student, as my journey continued through residency and fellowship to geriatrician and hospice palliative medicine specialist, I found a field that embraced my personal strengths in rehabilitation and nursing home medicine. An eye for detail, a desire for both depth and breadth, and a desire to provide person-centered care. I learned to hone my clinical skill set, including interdisciplinary teamwork designed to foster senior independent living. And for those who do reside in institutional living environments, to make their lives as fulfilling and meaningful as possible. So my advice for your many experiences you will have in medical school, proceed through each lesson and each rotation with an open mind and carry with you an attitude of gratitude for the opportunity 
and be thankful for the privilege of what we get to do for a living. Even on the mornings when you are awake, when no one else seems to be, when your feet are numb from wearing the wrong shoes in your first eight hour surgery, or yes, even that first time you step foot in a nursing home. The moment you realize that there is so much more to learn, to be thankful for the unique privilege, soak up the opportunities to keep learning and growing and embrace the opportunity to provide non-judgmental care to those who need it most. Congratulations on taking the first step into your exciting journey. On behalf of the Admissions Executive Committee and Dr. Aaron Derringer, the Assistant Dean for Admissions, as well as our entire admissions team at UNR Med, I am now pleased to present the Class of 2025. As you can imagine, this year was like no other as UNR Med followed medical schools across the country to pivot our entire admissions and recruitment process to a virtual format. It was no small feat. It has been a marathon to get to this day with the review of over 1,600 applications and 370 virtual interviews. So we're incredibly proud to introduce you to the 70 new students who are now part of the URN Med family. And I wanted, to get you to, I wanted for you to know them just a little bit. This year, we have 65 in-state students who hail from Reno, Sparks, Las Vegas, as well as Carson City, Urington, Dayton, Winnemucca, Round Mountain, and Pahrump. We also have five out-of-state students from California, Montana, Oregon, and Utah. They range in age from 20 to 36 years old. And following a nationwide trend of more women than men entering medical school, with more and more students identifying as non-binary. We are also continuing a very strong UNR Med family tradition, with several students following in the footsteps of their sisters, brother, wife, cousins, and parents who are proud UNR Med faculty members. In fact, family is a big theme of this class, and many hus with many husbands, wives, and a very new husband, actually, partners, moms, dads, or parents-to-be. Our students represent a variety of college majors from across the country, from the hard sciences, such as biochemistry, molecular biology, microbiology, and immunology, and neuroscience, to those that majored in anthropology, Spanish, public health, nursing, and gender studies. Interestingly, 70% of the class of 2025 are bilingual, with almost half speaking Spanish, and many that speak several additional languages, including Chinese, French, German, Urdu, Punjabi, and Hindi, to name just a few. Collectively, they are also committed to service and have volunteered more than 50,000 hours in the medical field and in their communities, which averages to more than 700 hours per student. As a group, the class of 2025 has also worked hard to support themselves, often with more than one job, with two thirds working in the numerous health professions, often as scribes or medical assistants, and another third that have worked as teaching assistants, tutors, or in research. They've also made ends meet working retail, food service, a ride, as ride sharing or delivery drivers, and even one hardworking individual who has been a wildland firefighter. I have been most pleased to learn that it appears the majority of the class of 2025 were able to take time over the summer to travel all over the world or stay close to home and spend quality time with their families and their pets for one last summer before medical school. In fact, we appear to have a record number of pet lovers in this class, which is dear to my heart, with the usual number of dog and cat lovers, of course, as well as a pet llama and baby birds. I'm thinking we may have to have a mobile veterinary service at some point on campus. And finally, one of my favorite things about getting to know the class is learning what they enjoy outside of school during our fun fact session that we have the very first day of MedFit orientation. What I learned last week is in addition to the many outdoor sports and activities that they will enjoy in the Reno Tahoe area, skiing, snowboarding, hiking, rock climbing, we have a few fantasy football fanatics, an aspiring pilot, a couple that have won competitions for citing digits in the number pi, some true crime enthusiasts, a former food critic, and several artists, including someone who crochets amigurumi animals, which are adorable if you have ever seen them, Google them. 
I hope each student remembers learning what they have in common. It is a great way to build bonds that will help support each other during the next four years, or 40 months, as Dr. Calvo very helpfully pointed out. So I hope you have enjoyed learning about the class of 2025 as much as I have. And now it's time for you to meet them individually as they don their white coats and truly begin their path to becoming physicians. I would like to ask Dr. Baker and Dr. Calvo to join the stage for presentation of the white coats and Dr. Piasecki for signing of the honor pledge. All right, here we go. Kayla Akins. <laughs> Eunice Sayuk. Zoe Noel Anderson. <laughs> Amir Abdul Aziz. Sawyer Bauer. Jordan Noel Becker. Jacob Christopher Benna. <laughs> Melena Bradley. Suzanne Collister. <laughs> Zoe Castro. Pauline K.
Garrett Cicchini. Avishay Chan. <laughs> Stephen Christian. Celeste Kavena, Lydia Cravalo. <laughs> Matthew Alex Curtis. Mohammed Daroub. <laughs> Ramnik Kar Damni. Christopher Espinoza. <laughs> Sahar Buratan Sedi. Ruby Garcia. <laughs> Ricardo Garcia Inguanzo. Janelyn Get Piet. <laughs> Emily Ann Jin. Allie Griffin.
Eric Andrew Edera. Michael Karen. <laughs> Clarice Singyi Ho. Simon Hu. <laughs> Bailey Ivory. Dakota Scott Johnson. <laughs> Jonathan Wayne Joyner. Xenia Katchen. <laughs> Lauren Kennedy. Elijah Krauss. <laughs> Bapinder Kumra. Martina Lange Fernandez. <laughs> Stephen Nicholas Lynchoni.
Ivan Alexandro Lopez. David Mang. <laughs> Victoria Magic. Aisha Masood. <laughs> Maliha Masood. Braden Matthews. <laughs> Kylie McClure. Cody Tyler McGrail. <laughs> Mackenzie Lynn Montero. Gianna Niemeyer. <laughs> Tatiana Nikui. Samantha Nolan. <laughs> Ruben E. Wando.
Urshan Mahadev Punda. Paul Joseph Rizan. <laughs> Isabella Rodriguez. Jessica Scammon. <laughs> Jacqueline Scarborough. Julia Schechter. <laughs> Jaime Angeles Sescundo the third. Michelle Kenneth Shaw. Karina Siddiqui. <laughs> Alexander Sigmund. Wanda Tai. <laughs> Ryan Thomas. Erica Tice.
David Tingle. Lourdes Valdez. <laughs> Raquel Maurice Westcott. Ryan Wilson. Victor Yu. Zaying Zeng. Now, I would like to welcome Senior Associate Dean of Clinical Affairs and the Chief Medical Officer and Director of Medical Education for Renown Health, Dr. Paul Suzinski. Good evening. On behalf of Renown Health's President and CEO, Dr. Tony Slonim, our board, over 1,200 medical staff and 7,000 team members, dozens of community faculty, as well as our partner organizations, congratulations to the UNR Med class of 2025. It is appropriate for us to celebrate your profound accomplishments and the white coat ceremony here at the Pioneer Center, as you, the class of 2025, will be the first class to fully experience, elevate, and evolve the historic affiliation between Renown Health and the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. Renowned Health in partnership with UNR Med is focused on a mission of clinical excellence, education, health sciences innovations, research to advance healthcare and the health of Nevada. Now personally, my most impactful experience was not clinical for medical school. A larger than life professor of anatomy had memorized the name of our entire class of 180 students. And Dr. Schneck has stated, I think it's important in teaching to get to know the students as people. It was my first lesson in medical school, learning anatomy, physiology, actually all of medicine is more than the structures, their names and functions, it's more than the diseases we would diagnose and treat. Every, every aspect is about people. Now, by getting to know people, we build trust. To develop trust and to be trustworthy are core values of a physician and a responsibility and expectation represented by the white coat you wear now. Your rotations, 
will aid in learning new skills, refining critical thinking, and provide you a broad set of patient and care team experiences. We also are excited that your passion for knowledge and inquiry will help us advance quality, safety, equity, and the value in the care that we provide. As you enter your medical training and throughout, we are committed to your success. Our partners and ours will help provide and foster an environment that is more than access to those care settings, excellence in clinical teachers, and diseases and treatments. We will aid in the development of one of the most critical skills for any physician, the ability to connect and build trust when a patient is in most need. For it's the relationship with your patient, their family, our community, which assures that the care and advice that you provide helps us attain our best health and achieve a healthy Nevada. So congratulations and best wishes class of 2025. At this time, I would like to welcome Ruby Lopez Flores, president of the class of 2024, to come to the podium for the recitation of the honor pledge. Thank you for the warm welcome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ruby Lopez Flores, president of the UNR Med class of 2024. As a representative of my class, it's a pleasure to welcome all of you this evening. To all the supporters in the crowd and those joining us virtually, family, significant others, children, and friends, I want to thank you so much for being here. The journey that your student is embarking on is difficult and your support is essential for their success. I can't tell you how many times I called my parents the first month of medical school to vent and talk about how hard it was. As I learned, it got easier, but I want to emphasize that I also got more distant. In the year to follow and beyond, there will be times when your student doesn't call or becomes so dedicated to their studies that you may not hear from them. I've talked to my mom about this and she always says, thank you for calling. I know you're busy and I am so proud of you. So just give your students some grace and they will fill you in in due time. I speak from experience when I say that, even when I didn't reach out to my supporters, I never stopped thanking them for everything they do. You are so vital to this process. Now, I would like to take a moment and address the incoming UNR Med class of 2025. It is an honor for me to welcome you all to your white coat ceremony. After more than a year of the unexpected masks, social isolation, Tiger King, murder hornets, and toilet paper shortages, it is exciting to have you all sharing in the company of your peers, teachers, family, and friends to celebrate this occasion. In spite of the hardships you encountered along your journey, you have shown resilience and tenacity that has earned your seat here today, donning your white coat for the first time of many. But please, don't forget to wash them. As you enjoy the feeling of your brand new white coat, I would like all of you to actively think about the emotions you are feeling in this moment. Take those emotions and internalize them so that when the going gets tough in your next four years at UNR Med, you can refer back to this day and think about the ultimate goals you have set for yourself. In fact, at some point today, find a moment to be alone and write how you felt so that you can remember how excited you were to embark on this journey. As we celebrate your commitment to medicine, and we recite the pledge, please look around at your peers. I want you all to remember that the people who understand exactly what you're going through in the moment are the people sitting right next to you, your classmates. All of you come from different backgrounds and walks of life, but medical school is what I like to call the great equalizer. You may have different life experiences, but you will live your successes and failures together. So do not take each other for granted. Lean on each other in times of need, build each other up, have heated ping pong competitions in the student lounge, and most importantly, have fun. Four years seems like a long time, but many say it goes by in the blink of an eye. I'll fill you in on that when I get to my fourth year. As you recite the pledge, say the words confidently as this is a reminder of the commitment you have to your future patients. Now please, find the pledge on the back of your program, stand, and face the audience with me and let us recite the pledge together. On my count. One, two, three. 
I will strive to maintain the highest standards of responsibility, integrity, and professionalism during my education and throughout my professional career. I will neither receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations or assignments, and I will approach my education with honesty and integrity. I will respect and support my classmates, colleagues, and teachers at all times. I will strive to acknowledge my limitations, strive to learn from my mistakes, and work to improve my skills to the benefit of my patients. I will strive to commit myself to a lifetime of learning and teaching both the art and science of medicine. I will strive to attend to all my patients with competence and compassion. I will maintain patient confidentiality and be tactful in my words and actions. I will honor the diversity of patients' experiences, cultures, and beliefs. I will recognize the privileges afforded to me as a physician and a physician in training and promise not to abuse them. I will use my knowledge to improve the lives of others and never to harm. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Congratulations, class of 2025. Welcome to the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. You may now be seated. Now, I'd like to invite to the stage Dr. Singer to share closing remarks. Thank you all. She remembered to have you guys sit down at least. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Pioneer Center for Performing Arts for use of this beautiful facility and all of the volunteer support today to make this event a success. Please remain seated as the class of 2025 recesses. They will recess directly outside the Pioneer Center for the Performing Arts to meet you on their plaza. <laughs> 